Let's award the first prize for cock-ups, the second for slips. Without them, we're nothing but slimy algae. Put your hands together for things that go wrong. Take off your hats to serendipity Won't you give a big hand for errors of applause for mistakes Without them we wouldn't be here Let's hear it for inexactitude for imprecision Bravo for fudging it if it three cheers For fudging it if it three cheers
I want to be the most. I want to be the most popular you know? girl in school. Like, I want to be the most popular girl because everyone wants to be the most popular girl. But for me, I think a big thing about what it means to be popular or well known or well liked or well networked is that it means you have a lot of resources that you can rely on. Coloring Kareem. With Kareem. Sometimes I feel like I'm in high school because I feel like I'm thinking about how I want to be the most popular girl. And like, everyone wanted to be the most popular girl because it meant you got invited to every party, every cool party. Every time anyone wanted to do anything, like, they wanted you there because you had something special. Or maybe it was more about conforming and I totally missed the boat on it. I think the contemporary art world is very much like high school. <laughs> and to be a successful artist, it definitely is a lot easier to try to be popular and try to brand yourself as something rather than just making art and having that speak for itself, which is kind of unfortunate maybe, but I think that's definitely how it works now if you want to play the game. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, about high school. And I was one of those popular kids, you know, I really was. And I, but uh, it's not a word that I use now. Like I notice uh, some people are, let's say, more powerful or some people are more mm, manipulative. The unfortunate thing is no matter how much I deconstruct popularity, I still want it. I still want it. It's probably the kind of thing that once you're over it, you'll get it. I don't know. I feel like I've never been super popular. Like I was in marching band in high school. And like, <laughs> like I was always, I don't know, I feel like I've always been a nerd. I feel like when I was in school. Hey everyone, it is FabFitTV. I am Kim Jefferson, I'm your host. I have an awesome guest tonight. I, I, we're probably gonna talk for an hour and I only have 30 minutes. So um, it's Meredith Mills. I met her a few months ago and I, she just had me fascinated. Um, as you know, FabFitTV is your resource for you to become your healthiest and most fabulous version of you. I am a personal trainer and lifestyle engineer and my goal of this show is to just introduce you to new concepts and new techniques for you to better embrace your health and your well-being. Um, I love Meredith because she is, has so many, she's multifaceted and I love multifaceted people. She's a chef, she's a massage therapist and we're also going to talk about all of this stuff here. Um, she's been working with a company called Acromatherapy which is just, I, I love it. You know, the, the whole theme of this show is all about self-care and you know for those of you who are like what the heck is self-care because my husband was like what's self-care is that when you wax yourself no it's not <laughs> when you wax yourself self-care is you take care of yourself we all have been on an airplane before and they all talk about you know put on your oxygen mask before you help anyone else and as women I know that many of us are the, running around trying to put everyone else's oxygen mask on and then we're like oh yeah I gotta put mine on or we forget about putting our ma oxygen mask off and then we're fell out dead on the floor so today is all about how do you not fall out dead on the floor and so Meredith is the best person to tell us about herself so give us a little background about yourself Meredith well, uh, I graduated from NYU with a degree in food science because I was very passionate about the food and how it affects our body, but that wasn't enough for me. The journey continued on to the chef's program, a chef's training program at the Natural Gourmet Cooking School in Manhattan. and. Then I decided that uh, true health goes beyond food, and I got into body work. Uh, massage therapy, acupressure, Reiki, and after working in hospitals and with several types of clientele, I realized that food and your lifestyle and what you do for self-care really makes a difference um, in, in your lifestyle and your longevity and your quality of life. So I started a company called True Nourish in which I provide all of those services. and. Um, that's, 
That's me in a nutshell. And, you know, that's the reason why I, I liked you because you saw that it's not just one element of it. Right. And I know for me personally, back in my corporate days, self-care, I was like, who, who, what? I'm busy. I ain't got time for self-care. And, you know, the one of the things I really liked about it was that, you know, when our conversations, there were things that like I could do at home mm -hmm. that I didn't have to, you know, if I'm busy, I have kids, I have a corporate job, whatever, that I didn't have to take time to go get the massage. I didn't have to take time to go do things. There are things that I could simply do at home that doesn't require a lot of time, money, energy, whatever it is that is your excuse for not taking care of yourself. So, you know, what I liked about it was when we talked about, um, the color therapy, you know, one of the things, you know, we've talked to, you talked to me about that I absolutely loved and has become such vogue right now is coloring. And I know that, you know, I have a couple clients who are what I call stress balls. <laughs> And they're stress balls. And I was like, you need to chill. Like, yes. you need to chill. Like, and I was like, what, what's something simple and easy you can do? And one of them was, took up coloring. And mm -hmm. she's like, she goes, it just like gets me out of my head. And so, you know, I noticed you brought coloring books. And I was like, oh, my God. Well, it's, it's scientifically proven that meditation or working with like a coloring book retrains the brain. It really presses the pause button, which we need to do every single day to um, get rid of the cortisol and have us shift and take a break um, so that we don't start to fall apart and we don't have those problems and we honestly do not have time to be sick. Um, in this world, we need to uh, take care of ourselves on a daily basis. And it's funny that you, yeah, that's my favorite expression, press the pause button. I love that. I use it all the time. But I also, you hit on the thing I always talk about um, being sick. You know, a lot of my clients will come, especially this time of year, you know, where it's hot one day, snowing, blizzard that we had yesterday and then it's 60 degrees or it's 80 degrees and you know this is right now the time your body is susceptible to getting cold and I always say to them like this is the time you need to slow down I go because when you get sick it is your body's way of saying slow your tushy down yes well we're constantly surrounded by bacteria it doesn't uh, during the times where it's hot cold hot cold there aren't more bacteria uh, what happens is we just um, we're not in balance and we don't take care of ourselves so we don't have the resiliency and I hardly get sick because I take that self-care every day um, and the pathogens that are surrounding us con constantly they're less likely to or our bodies can metabolize them and not even have them affect us right and so you know one of the simplest things that we can do for self-care is sleep yes <laughs> well Sleep is that your, uh, everybody knows that sleep um, helps you rejuvenate. And um, this is a great thing. One of the great things I use with clients for sleep, um, but also taking a bath. One of the, the tips that I always off, um, offer, take an Epsom salt bath. The Epsom salts puts minerals back into your body. The heat of the bath helps you relax. You do it right before you go to bed and you reset. You don't need sleeping medication. You don't need all of that. And because as your body cools down, you naturally uh, fall asleep. And it's funny you say that um, a, a fitness mentor that I absolutely love, he has talked about Epsom salt baths for a million years. And he has always yeah. said that if you're someone who can't sleep, instead of relying on medication, um, that in your sleep time ritual, that he's like, even if it's five minutes, he goes, he was sitting in, just sitting there watching the water. Yes. Fill. And then if you, even if you sat in the tub for five minutes and then immediately went to bed, that that is just kind of a nice way to just calm everything down. Yes. You must uh, take a break from computers, phones, all of those things, at least about 45 minutes before you go to bed because it's the blue light that activates your brain. So just turning on the water, having it just, again, refocus, shut it off, um, helps your body get into ritual to go to sleep. Yeah. So one of the other, um, and all these amazing tips that we're talking about are going to be in the show notes. Um, you have to go to fabfitsquad.com slash live TV and all the no show notes will 
will be up there. It'll take about 24 hours for us to get the, the recording and all that good stuff, but it will be up there for you guys to watch. So, you know, we talk about color, we talk about meditation, and it's all kind of wrapped into this, like, achromatherapy that you've been working with. Yes. Um, achromatherapy is, is brilliant because it is all, it's simple, it's easy, it only takes five minutes. It's great for moms that need um, something for their kids at bedtime or bath time to um, have empowerment to choose what they like and to focus, refocus. It works with sound, um, s sound, smell, uh, and touch. And um, it starts with something called a journey palette. It's just a five minute treatment where you just ask somebody to pick a picture. Let's say you have a toddler and they're having a tantrum. You ask them where they wanna go. And after they pick the color, because we've seen that people will retain imagery and that helps people uh, refocus their energy, refocus their stress if they have a picture versus having someone tell them, stop doing that, stop doing that. Um, and then what the mom could do or you yourself at work or wherever you are, you just don't, you put the headphones on with your five minute meditation associated with the picture while you use a cream, a spray or an essential oil to either I as a therapist or a mom would rub it into my child's hands or behind their neck. Um, and the scents are all created from a, a local aromatherapist and herbalist. So it, all the color and they all resonate together and it really within five minutes after the meditation and the scents and the, the touch truly just refocus. And anybody can choose uh, the colors, whatever, whatever speaks to you. Some people who have a fear of public speaking, they'll, um, the color purple resonates with them. So they'll always have the color purple spray with them before they have to make a presentation. Some people are afraid of flying. You can customize it any way you like. I like that it's something that you can do with your, your children as well as you can do with yourself because I, I think one of the things that we we lose, especially in this society, is the ability to self-soothe. Correct. Um, you know, nowadays and, you know, before the show, you and I were having a conversation, you know, when we were kids, there wasn't iPads. There wasn't, you know, Nintendo or any other version. Like if if I needed to chill out before bed, I was given an old fashioned book. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there was no it wasn't Kindle. It was it was here's a book. Yes. Read it. Or, yeah. you know, that we didn't have four hundred channels of TV. We never, and we really never learned how to self soothe ourselves. Um, so Fortunately, we have so many different things that we can do now that we've learned about um, the words that soothe people, the, the baths, all these different things um, that we can actually take care of. And hopefully the next generation is not going to be like the older generations where they're falling apart at the seams and then right. the medication, with it's just a mess. <laughs> so one of the things, you know, I know someone in the audience is thinking, I self-soothe with wine. I get that all the time. Um, there are many, as we said, there are many ways to self-medicate. However, um, wine, beer, um, those type of ways to self-soothe might do it for the moment, but they affect your adrenals, they affect your quality of sleep, they affect your liver, and those are your detoxification um, organs and over time that's when you start to dry out and fall apart because those weren't taken care of and you know I like I say every show because everyone always asks me questions about wine and get me wrong I love my wine um, but it's not an every night you know so a lot of times I say to people like I would rather save up a gl glass of wine to have a nice bottle of wine an expensive bottle of wine on a Friday or a Saturday versus having the two buck chuck every night well, that becomes, that's a habit. Right. And as we know, and we're learning that what you do today completely affects what happens to you tomorrow, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And the sooner you start to take care of yourself in a healthy, health supportive, health promoting way, the better off that you will be. And so, you know, you talk about meditation and I will tell you that I, for a long time, I was like, that's just woo woo. That's just, don't put me down for that. 
And I will say that I probably about two years, uh, one of my good friends, like she's like, probably the most spiritual person I know. Um, and she really got into meditation. And so she like, I unbeknownst to me, I'm like, I would like you to teach me to meditate. Unbeknownst to me, she made me meditate for 30 minutes. And it was very, like my mind was just like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> like peaking, like, is we done yet? Are we done yet? <laughs> But I find that, and then over, you know, the course of two years, I've kind of like woven my way through meditation. And I found that like, I'm okay with 10 minutes. I'm okay with five minutes. And it's okay if like, you just can't settle your mind just to pull out. Yes. And I always, I think in our society, we're all about rules and the rules exactly. say, oh, you need to meditate for blah and it's either silent meditation or you're listening to monks chanting or whatever the heck it is, yes. whatever the rule is. And I like the five minutes because if you have five minutes, like you said, before a meeting and you are like all hopped up about the meeting, I can grab something like this or I can even just pop on the meditation. The, the meditation. And it doesn't even have to be a meditation. It could just be like quieting music. Well, it's it, meditation. A lot of people think means sitting silent in a room and, and trying to be all zen out. And right. actually, meditation is only what you need it to be. So for example, the coloring books, that's, if you wanna focus, that is meditation. If you want to listen to music or run the bath or walk in nature, that is meditation. Playing with your dog, your cat. Um, so this is five minutes and it does encompass all of the senses. So it, it really just presses pause and takes care of what you need and what resonates with you. And I, I really, I truly, truly, truly like that. And so, you know, one of the things I like about you is that like, you're like me, you're like, all right, let's brass tax it. What are like four like awesome things? Cause like, like I say to everyone, I'm giving you four, but pick one. You don't have to be a rock star and do all of that. Right. So let's just, you know, like we talk about, you know, one of the things we, we chatted with about water. Like I'm, I drink a gallon of water. Most people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, I pee a lot. That's how I do it. So, well, water is actually one of the worst ways to be hydrated. Yes, you do need to drink water, but the best way to get hydration is through fruits and vegetables and different soups. So, um, it, that's how your body is, is bioavailable. Otherwise you do, like she said, you just go to the bathroom and there it is. Um, so, cucumbers, putting cucumbers in your water, putting lemon in your water, those things actually help with the hydration and your cells assimilate it. So with the cu cucumbers and all the other kind of water dense foods, they help me to retain it versus uh, with water, it just kind of takes what it needs and flushes the rest out. It doesn't help you retain it. It helps you um, actually absorb it. Gotcha. Otherwise it just goes through your kidneys and flows out. Gotcha. 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 And you know, I'm all about movement. Like I try to move at least 30 minutes a day and not kick my ass kind of moving. Mm -hmm. I cannot really say yes, but kick my butt kind of <laughs> movement. Um, but you know, you talk about moving. So, you know, what are some of the tips I could do about moving? Well, the lymphatic system is your major source of detoxification so it, the only way that it can be uh, most optimal is through movement so movement can mean um, anything with your pumping of your arms is considered movement for your lymphatic system I love to uh, the trampoline it's great we have all those trampoline places like hmm. launch just get a mini trampoline they're very inexpensive you can find them on Amazon anywhere wow. and just 15 minutes of just jumping activates your lymphatic system and that's all you got to do um, wake up in the morning drink lemon water hot lemon water jump on the trampoline a little bit you have fortified your body I like it I like it that's all <laughs> and you know, we, you know we've, we've talked about your massage and you know we are, who doesn't like a good massage and so for me you know what you know can I you know get away with having a massage like once a week, once a month. We've got friends saying hi to us <laughs> on the street. Um, you know, talk to me about massage. Massage is great because, well, first of all, it forces you to relax. You are laying on a table. Hopefully you're in a uh, comfortable setting, whether at home or in a, a spa. Um, I like to, um, 
work on people wherever they're most comfortable. So that's one. Second of all, our hands have electrons. And when someone hugs you, when they hold your hand, when they touch you, it's an electronic, tra it's electron transfer. I noticed this when I was doing Reiki at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital on the cancer patients. It, they kind of, they just like suck the electrons out of you. And of course, just the manual working of the, of the tissue softens all of the, um, just all of the tension and it's just, yeah. it's just lovely. And, you know, we've talked about meditation and, you know, I guess, you know, like I go back to rules. Um, you know, so many people are like, oh, I wake up in the morning and I meditate. And I'm like, I wake up in the morning Not and I'm me. like, I got to hit the ground running. Yeah. Where for me, my meditation is my like sleep ritual. It's my like mm -hmm. quiet my mind before I go to bed. Yes. Well, when that's fabulous, but when you wake up in the morning, you should also have some type of ritual, whether it's under the covers or having your morning tea. I like to make a matcha tea and just, just hang out with my dog after my kids have gone. And, um, that is my meditation. So you just need any ritual because if automatically you op you wake up in the morning and you look at your smartphone, you've already started the cortisol. Right. Exactly, and agreed. And you know, one of the things everyone you know, you read those like successful people. This is what they do. And successful people in the morning, you know, they do talk about meditation, but they also talk about they do other things besides wake up and be like, I need to check my email. You know, they 